Good morning, chaps. Can you see me there? I'm just treating myself to a cup of tea on this. Well, it says eight degrees up there, but it feels decidedly more nippy than that. And uh, to start the day, I thought I'd show you something that I don't think I've actually showed on the vlog yet. And that is the submission of an EX46, which here in the UK is our beer duty submission. So as we are now into January, the beer duty declaration for December is due to be submitted before the 15th of the month. I don't like to hang around, so I generally get stuck straight in with it. Straight in the bin. And, uh, well, I thought this time round, I'd take you guys along for the ride. So I'm just going to set the camera up on the uh, computer screen. I'm not going to do a screen cap because I can't really do it at work because the computer is not quick enough, frankly. So uh, we'll go up there, we'll set the camera up on the screen and I'll just basically whiz through all of the parts and processes of the application and uh, give you an idea of what we have to endure uh, once a month for HMRC as unpaid tax collectors and of course this is just for the beer duty we also have to do the VAT, PAYE, national insurance all the rest of it and uh, when you become self-employed these are all burdens that the government put on you and when you're an employee they are all taken care of by your employer so be grateful you're getting more out of this deal than you think you know because obviously the employer has to contribute on your behalf also anyway let's go upstairs and have a look at how we at HB submit our beer duty returns so here we are in the office and if I zoom in like that I think we've pretty much got a good take on the whole screen so here is our duty return for December so we effectively have to pay HMRC £547 for the pleasure of selling our own beer thank you very much HMRC so this information here is generated by my um, uh, brew management system uh, view plan BMS so that's it on the screen calculated for December and this is the printable version here so this contains all the information that we're going to need to translate across onto the HMRC document so if you're producing low ABV beer which I think is uh, I can't remember what the threshold is on that one I think it's below 2.9% uh, uh, then that's £8.42 £8 per hectolitre percent standard ABV is £9.54 and then high ABV is an extra £5.96 on top and that's anything over I think 7.5% uh, ABV I can't remember I'm a bit rusty on this but fortunately the software takes care of all of these numbers for us if we do happen to forget and then below it tells you exactly what you've sold down here you know and uh, where that duty has actually been incurred throughout what you've sold for the month so let's come back to the HMRC document you have to go to uh, HMRC taxservices.gov.uk and go to the form EX46 you have to log in with your own government gateway password and it will bring you to this page here where you insert your name and what position you are in the business and then uh, we'll click forwards next we need to put in the brewer's name the address that's all done on this and all of this has to be entered every single time it doesn't allow you to save pre-filled forms 
which is a ball ache. Then you've got your brewer's reference number, which you should have been given once you was given your um, your brewer's license. Here at the brewery, we're not VAT registered, even though we are at the pub, so we select no there. And then, what return are we submitting for? January 2020, December, November, October. Well, you really should have had October submitted and paid as with November as well. December is the one we're looking to do today. Is it a nil return? So even if you don't sell any beer, they're still gonna ask you to submit a return with nil on it. I know it sounds daft, but it just proves that you as a brewer are still active, even though you may not have sold anything that month. And then uh, we go on to the duty suspended deliveries and receipts. So this is if we were going to get, get our beer contract canned, for instance, and we or bottled, and we wanted to ship the beer out to a contractor, that has to be done under duty suspension. Otherwise, we'd have to pay all of the beer duty up front as it left the premises because the duty point for our brewery is effectively the shutter doors. So any beer that crosses those doors is el eligible for beer tax. So we don't contract anything. We've not shifted anything to any other premises. We don't have any external warehouses. So we've popped a zero in all these boxes here for this section of the duty return form and we'll carry on. Now, these are on paid deliveries. So this is stuff that's actually gone out and has been delivered to our customers, the brew shed mainly. And uh, what type of paid deliveries have been made? Well, we go ahead and look on this page here and as you can see, we've got uh, standard ABV, there we go, at £9.54, that's a, a small brewer's relief there, so uh, otherwise that would be £18, £19.08 uh, full beer duty, but we get brewer's relief so it's half, uh, I'll probably talk about that more another day. So uh, that's your standard rate. 18 pounds, 19 pounds and 5p, or 4p, whatever it was, but we're small brewers relief because we produce less than 5,000 hectolitres per year. And if we did any uh, high strength beer or low strength beer, we'd also have to select these two boxes here as well. As you can probably see, I don't know if you can spot my mouse on the screen there. So let's continue. So how many bulk hectolitres were delivered from uh, duty suspension for consumption. Well, it says on here we delivered 14 bulk hectolitres, so that's uh, 1,400 litres of beer. There we go. So we put that in 14.00. Then what was the hectolitre percent of this delivered? So the system does this for us, but effectively it's taking the hectolitres and it's multiplying the hectolitres by the percent of each individual beer. So you can see down here, for instance, this 3.8% beer um, was 5.33 hectolitres, but it gives us 20.25 hectolitre percent. So that's 5.33 multiplied by 3.8, which will give you 20.25. And that's how a hectolitre percent is arrived at for uh, the benefit of HMRC. And then it tells us the duty rate, £9.54, that's correct, and what we owe. And this has to be paid by the 25th of January. So they want £547.02. We'll just confirm, that's the same here, 54702. Everything adds up nicely thanks to the fantastic software that we've got installed. View Plan BMS. The chap's name is Matt who sells this software and it's really quite handy. So let's continue. There we go. It's telling us that this is what you owe. You son of a bitch. So you better pay it by the 25th. Then it asks us were there any under declarations of the previous period. If we under declared, then we'd add it on here, meaning we'd have to pay a little bit more. 
we didn't. Any over declarations, meaning that HMRC will owe us some money back. Heaven forbid. But no, we don't. And any spoilt beer. Well, we've got some spoilt beer actually down there, but I'm not going to be claiming it on this return. We had some vacant that wasn't actually on point. We'll talk about that later as well, a little bit more. So we'll continue. Are you reclaiming any duty as drawback? So this will be kind of what's in the casks when they come back. So you get like, you declare an ullage. Let's say you're sending out a firkin that's 39.5 litres because even though it holds 40 litres, you may have half a litre of yeast sediment in the bottom of that tank. Well, if you get your casks back and you measure it, and there is more than half a litre, let's say 10 litres, you can claim that back as drawback and uh, you, can, you don't have to pay the duty on it because the beer has not been consumed by the public. So, total duty declared, 57402. Let's save and continue. Do you pay by HMRC? Do you pay HMRC by direct debit? No, because I don't trust them. So then you have to put in your brewer's account number so when you do make a payment, it goes onto your account so to speak, and mine is 9904656. And now don't worry about anybody knowing this because uh, if anyone used that brewer's account number for anything, they'd just be paying off my duty bill. So <laughs> they can do that if they like. And here's the summary. Everything's in there and we're just gonna hit save and continue. I always like to pop my email address in there. This is one of the only times it lets you pre-fill a form just so they know and I get proof that I've submitted this declaration and then I also like to print out a copy of the submission and I write in the top corner sent on the date 030120 and then I put this code in H two Y M five one seven N A E and then of course I've got that all written down on there should HMRC say No you didn't submit your due return on time and I'll say Yes I did you shit face So there we go <laughs> That's uh, that's HMRC Bay duty, return, submitted, all before I've had the first slurp of my tea. Oh, lovely. Right, let's go downstairs and do some real work. So, upstairs I mentioned a beer which we had as drawback. And this is it. So we've got five firkins here of vacant gesture which were rejected by... Stuart effectively so we put them on the bar and a couple of people said this doesn't quite taste like the vacant gesture what's going on uh, so the beer wasn't off it's fine it's perfectly good beer um, but there was a flavor issue with it and the general consensus was that it was thin it tasted thin light and didn't have the body that the vacant gesture usually has so, thanks to installing the tilt hydrometers up there, I was able to then go onto the Google document and have a look at the fermentation profile of the beer, Gal 58, which happened to be in FV7. So, you may recall last year when we used this fermenter, there was a big bump of ice around this cooling port and the temperature during the fermentation of that particular beer rose into the low 20s and we normally ferment below 20 degrees C, about 18, 19 degrees for all of our beers here. So that meant that there was something wrong and uh, a quick, quick round of troubleshooting sort of led us to the pump in the cooler at the back. So, as you can see, the cooler is sat there. That is what provides the 
uh, cold glycol for the tank itself and while that was completely operational the pump in it was not so it was unable to attain the head pressure sufficient enough to push the glycol up to this height which is about five six feet so that meant that there was a bit of a runaway effect in terms of fermentation temperatures which caused the vacant in this tank to over attenuate because the yeast got a little bit carried away and that over attenuation meant that the ABV on the beer was up slightly and of course the residual sugars were down and that is what people could tell the difference with the sugar wasn't there the residual sugar wasn't there the body wasn't there and it was completely evident um, when the beer went on the bar so I plan to do what many other breweries would do as well and I've done in the past we basically take that beer out of circulation we rebadge it as a different beer we alter the ABV and so obviously we're paying the correct duty on it as well after doing some more testing we know what the original gravity was we just have to retest the final gravity because it's over attenuated a little bit more in cask than it should have done then we can go back onto the system and correct those numbers and then create a new badge can you hear the chiller kicking in then we can create a new badge uh, a pump clip for the beer and then we can sell that beer on the bar as something else so like I said the beer is actually really quite nice it's just not the vacant so you can't be selling it as the vacant if it ain't the vacant so we'll call it something like Harrison's uh, Mosaic Gold or something like that because it's a lighter lighter beer uh, and probably easier to drink in terms of uh, let's say a lager drinker wanted to try one of our beers they might like this better than the vacant because it's not as fruity I don't know I don't know but uh, that's the plan anyway so that beer if this doesn't work and uh, we assess the the beer that's in those containers as not suitable it is though because I I actually want to take it home and drink it it's good beer uh, but yeah if that's the case then I either take it home and drink it or we have to destroy it and then that is what you'd have on the HMRC document you'd have to tell them how you disposed of that beer whether it was sold uh, which means that duty is el eligible on it Really, if I drink it, duty's eligible on it as well, but I suppose uh, we could get away with putting that down to a research and development. Um, bit of a sketchy area, so I don't want to ruffle too many feathers on that one. Uh, or we just tip it all down the drain, which is absolutely heartbreaking, and, uh, and write it off as disposal. So they're the options we've got, but uh, knowing how... Uh, well received the beer actually was considering it was uh, not the vacant uh, we're definitely I think going to be rebadging it and putting it back on the bar under a different name right that's a little bit of uh, discussion about the administration side of things out of the way for today so let's get on with some real work as I said um, the workshop was moved around just before Crimbo and uh, well, I want to make sure that everything is in its right place and one of the biggest things that's happened, one of the biggest mashups that's happened is all the screws have now ended up all over the place. So I've got two drawers full of screws down there behind you. If I just scoot around below the grinders, we've got screws there. We've also got a ton of screws up on the top of that shelf there and basically I've got a small chest of drawers at the side of the chop saw oh, at the side of the chop saw and I'd like all the screws to live in there quite frankly oh, there's even a box of screws here they're everywhere so my thoughts are we take all of these drawers out, pop them here on the side and sort them all out. These were in the top drawer, it's a load of three phase sockets and plugs 
that we had kind of just for spares and repairs. And also in here, we've got some single phase ones, trailing sockets, that kind of thing. So I've just taken them out of that top drawer and then we'll dedicate the whole of this chest of drawers to be in the screw drawer. And if I can't fit all my screws into one set of drawers, then there's definitely got to be something wrong, hasn't there? I've got too many screws. How many screws does a man need? Well, I don't know if I can answer that. So, I'm going to go ahead and sort these. I'm not going to film it, because God, it's going to take me ages. I'm going to put the music on, and we'll come back and have a look at what I hope will be a wonderful sauté and uh, basically a librarian-esque division of screws, sizes, lengths and all the rest of it. When we come back, it should look tip-top. Well, that took longer than I hoped, but there we go. Absolutely tons and tons of screws starting down here with the 3x12s and finishing back here with the 5 by 100s they're all wood screws basically and then down the bottom where the weight is we've got all the drywall screws and the random bits and bobs some really random fellas look at the length of that said the bishop to the actress and then in here we've got a free draw so I've no doubt that I'm going to find more screws knocking around the joint so as we finish tidying and organizing this workshop in the coming days we will, of course, be able to put whatever we come across in that drawer. So no sooner have we sorted out the screw drawer than I'm also starting a project over here. So this little alcove, old window, it actually was a door, but uh, you can see what I mean. That basically serves no purpose whatsoever in the workshop. So I've decided to cut myself a few little timber blocks and if I can find the mark there it is we're just going to pop up some shelves very very simple style of shelving just a couple of brackets on the wall either end and then we'll just throw a piece of timber in between the two and uh, that should be good enough for just popping odds and sods on there as long as we can kind of fit a can of whatever on the top shelf we're gonna have a pretty small middle shelf and looks like a pretty small bottom shelf as well but never mind at least we're going to have some more storage space for odds and sods. I might just bring this shelf down a touch so we can definitely get cans and whatnot on it because there's not a lot of room. There we go. And then all I have to do now is cut some shelves, put the level on, translate these brackets to the other side, and then there we have it. It will be a little bit more storage, fill in the gaps as we go, then I'll probably just paint this section. In fact, I'll probably paint the whole workshop this uh, this coming month or so, when it's a quiet period in January, just so it all looks a little bit better. I suppose it'll be easier to see me and whatever we're doing from the background if I just whitewash the whole thing. I contemplated doing it a while back and I never got around to it, so maybe it's time I pulled the trigger on that one. So I'm going to go and cut a few shelves and we'll pop them on just to see what it looks like. I've also got to rejig the dust extraction as well. That's something we're going to revisit, particularly for the table saw. Not today though. Well, there we go. I couldn't really help myself. I decided while I was putting the shelving in to get the paintbrush out and give it a paint anyway. I've been putting this off for a long time and if you look at the brickwork up there, let me just zoom in with the camera, look at how mottled it is, the, the jointing, the mortar in this brickwork 
is shot. The building is 1700s, this part of the building. And uh, it is really, really old. Really, really old. So it's going to be very difficult for me to kind of uh, get it painted uniformly. Which is why way back a couple of years ago I wanted to kind of spray paint it. But uh, you have to thin the paint down too much to spray paint it with a compressor. So that kind of didn't work either. But we've got a coat on. It certainly makes the tool stand out a little bit better and hopefully it makes me stand out a little bit better from the background. So I think I'm going to wrap it up actually today. It's Friday and uh, I want to go home and try a few beers, some home brewers that people have sent me. Alan and the Aussie Brewer. I'd like to get into them this weekend and put a video out for them so stick around for that. And uh, I will part with this little bit of advice whenever you're going to tackle a job such as this one. If somebody asks you what you want to paint a six foot fence, just tell them you want a six foot brush and you won't go far wrong. We'll see you on the next one folks, cheers.